Hi, I'm Pat Fiorello and welcome to Painting the Beauty of Flowers. Today we're going to do a painting of lilacs and while I usually prefer to paint from life, um, sometimes we don't always have that opportunity. We're not in the place we want to paint or we can't uh, secure the flowers that we want. This was a photo that I took um, on a workshop in France and uh, it was um, an overcast day so it's a little bit of, uh, different of a painting subject since we don't have the bright sunny uh, sky and deep shadows but I think it will be a challenging and fun uh, lesson for today. Um, before we get started I want to just talk about um, you know how I start a painting and what I first want to get in touch with is what got me excited about that subject to paint. We've There are lots of things to paint um, so as an artist, you're selecting the things that excite and energize you. For me, with these flowers, um, of course I love the flowers and the frilly nature of the texture on these flowers and the movement and energy of the flowers, but also um, I like this big light shape here. And um, so that gave me an idea of the big light shape against the darker flowers against a darker background. So that's kind of already a built-in focal point. I took a black and white photo uh, of that image and um, you know you can clearly see the bunch of white flowers here. However, um, they're kind of isolated there and there's not a lot of movement. And so what I'm thinking about is when I'm working from a photo or from life, how do I make a better design than what's already there? So uh, I'm going to add maybe a little bit light up here and then come down to the big focal point. And right now there's a darker color flower down here. Um, I can change that to a light flower to kind of have a, a little bit of a punctuation point at the end. So you're going to have like a C, K, C shape coming through and leading your eye through the paint, painting. One of the things that you want to think about before you start painting is how am I going to move someone's eye through the painting to get to the focal point or you know my main point of the, the story? So um, I also did um, a small black and white study up here in oil paint, uh, black, white, and gray, and you can see the movement that I'm trying to uh, get here. So um, as we get started today, I'm going to use uh, one method to paint. I have to say there are probably about four different methods that I regularly use to paint. There's no one way that I do it all the time. And uh, I just pick different approaches based on what I think will work best for the scene or uh, you know what I might be in the mood to do that day. And what I've done over time is some of the paintings I've done using two or three of the different methods and sometimes even all four, just as a learning experience to see was any one method better. And after doing that many times, I've concluded um, it really doesn't matter how you start the painting. Um, you're gonna have to get to the end um, covering values, shape, color, and edges. So whether you start the painting with shape and value or shape and color, you're still going to have to touch on all four of those pieces to complete your painting. So the order in which you do it doesn't necessarily matter. At the end, you're going to have to address all of those. And, and I haven't found much of a difference. I've done the same painting in four methods, and at the end, they all pretty much look similar. Um, some of that is also you have the same artist doing them, but also you're still addressing shape, color, value, and edges. So um, today what I'm going to do I, to start, uh, start us off and save a little time, what I've done is take a, an oil panel here. It's a Centurion uh, uh, oil primed linen. And I toned it with uh, Viridian and Transparent Oxide Red uh, with a little bit of um, mineral spirits in there. And then uh, just wiped off the excess, let that dry. But before it totally dried, I came in with a um, paper towel with Gamsol and lifted out where I want the lightest shapes to be. This way I kind of have a natural path of where my eye is gonna go. And particularly since some of the lights are the very delicate lilac color or the very um, clean white, I want them to stay clean and not really tainted by the underpainting. So I already have a little pathway here to remind me of my eye. Uh, without necessarily having to do a lot of, of drawing yet. 
And so that's what we're starting off on. I also have pre-mixed uh, some of my paint combinations. This painting, if you think about it, is um, basically uh, a complementary color scheme. You could say just broadly reds and greens, of this being kind of a red violet. And I'm going to push some of these greens a little bit more to a yellow green, which would be a nice complement to the, the red violet. But it's a pretty narrow range of colors, the whites, the reds, the greens, neutrals. I have um, pre-mixed uh, a lot of the paint that I'll use today. I don't normally do that, but uh, for this purpose, it'll speed things up. And I'll let you know what colors I use to um, get the, the colors that I'll be painting with. So um, let's get started. And um, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is to um, cover up some of the background here so we can see a better, um, picture of our overall shape of this bouquet. So I'm going to basically un eliminate some of this unnecessary background and set it up for later with some of the darks and the mid-tone greens. And at this stage, I'm keeping the paint relatively thin and I'm basically negatively painting and leaving the bouquet uh, to come forward as the positive shape with the paint. So I'm going to just bring in some thin, um, this is viridian and transparent oxide red. And I'm just going to basically remove some of this canvas, light canvas, with some of the darker value. I did thin this out with a tiny bit of mineral spirits just to, um, or Gamsol is the brand that I use, um, just to keep it a little bit thin and transparent there. And I want to um, start coming in on the higher side here with some of the warmer greens. Like I mentioned, I don't want it all to be dark, cool greens, even though it was a pretty cool overcast day. I need some color variety in there. And also the yellow green, I think will look really nice with these red violets. So I'll be painting around where uh, the lilacs will be. And some of this may get covered over, but I'm just trying to basically make a, a relief of these flowers coming out here. Later on, I'll come back in over this um, and uh, I can adjust the color, I can adjust the shape, I can adjust the edges, but for now, it's just giving me a little bit more uh, guidance of where the main event is going to be here. So I think that's probably enough to be covered in there. This area will have some of the lilacs and leaves, so I'll, I'll leave that for later. So we've got basically a picture of the overall shape of our bouquet and thinking of the bouquet and vase as one big shape. Now we'll break it down into smaller shapes. And when I think about shapes, it's not only the shape of an individual lilac. I happen to have a, a silk lilac here. And um, the lilac itself is kind of like a cone shape. It's almost like an ice cream cone without the tip. And there will be you no know, maybe light hitting the top in this particular scene, shadow underneath because I was outdoors and so the skylight was above. Um, and there will be a shadow plane and churning and the lit plane. So I'm thinking about that for each individual lilac. But before I even get to any particular lilac, I'm also thinking about clusters of lilacs, those three white uh, lilacs that are my main event there. I don't want to think of them as three separate pieces right now. I want to think of them as one big abstract shape. So I'll look for the shadow pattern of those clusters and then the light pattern. So I'm going to move on next to do the shadow pattern and I'm going to go into the uh, darker, darker like magenta type um, lilacs. I've mixed up some uh, colors already and what I did was mixed like three or four different um, 
uh, colors that can be in these lilacs. I have a darker shadow color, which may be a magenta with even a touch of um, either transparent oxide brown or um, burnt umber, something to warm it and dull it. Again, I said that this was taken outside in a cool day. It doesn't have that bright sun and the cool shadows. This one is the reverse. It's got more of a cool ambient light uh, reflected on the top of the flowers and the underside is warmer. So I added a little brown to warm up uh, what could be a cooler purple. So I have that as my dark value for the shadow, which we're gonna jump into first. But then I've also have some straight cobalt blue, uh, a cobalt violet, excuse me, which is a vivid, rich color. Um, it, it's not a real powerful color. Uh, if you start mixing other colors into it, uh, it'll kill it off pretty quickly. But it is a beautiful color to use straight out of the tube on some of these violets. And then I took some of that and added a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, a pale blue in order to have even a lighter value for the, uh, the uh, top of this where the, the petals are being hit. In the lilac shape, um, I said it was like a cone, but the thing that's different than uh, just a regular cone, you have all the little petals jutting out. So um, all those petals make it a very interesting shape and all of them get hit differently by the light or might have cast shadows on them from petals that are on top. So flowers can be very interesting shapes to paint, but still we ha want to have the overall feeling of form uh, before we get into any details about any petals. So we've got some shape here. Now we're going for form. So I'm looking at my reference, and again, um, I always tell my students, the reference is information, it's inspiration, uh, but you are in charge. Uh, every artist has their artistic license, and you get to say what goes in and what doesn't go into your painting. It's kind of like going to a buffet where there's uh, all-you-can-eat food. There's some things you'll say, okay, I'll take a little of that. Some things you'll say, I don't want any of that, and some, I want a lot of that. Um, the same thing with your reference. There may be things that really excite you and you want that in there, and there may be things that are irrelevant. So I always use kind of the rule of thumb, if it doesn't help the story or it doesn't help the design, is there any reason you need to put it in? And a lot of times uh, there's stuff that we'll leave out. If I looked at all the different little parts and pieces of this, um, it, it would make me crazy to do all that and no one would want to really look at it. So my job is to simplify to what's most essential, what's most important. So I'm looking at these uh, darker uh, lilacs and looking for where I see planes or shapes of shadow, the darker shapes. I'm using a flat brush. I, I often like to use flat brushes. Uh, both for blocking in and, and uh, the finishing parts of the painting as well. Um, and I'm looking to see where the shapes are. Do these dark shadow shapes lead you anywhere? Do they connect? Can I connect them if they aren't already connected? Um, and uh, to create a, a shadow pattern. Here in the middle, um, this... Uh, lilac is not getting so much sun. It's pretty dark here, which is going to be great because it'll set me up to have some uh, harder edges and more contrast exactly where I want you to go. So I just am making note of where these dark planes are, and I might push that even a little extra dark. And we're just getting kind of a general sense at this point where these shapes are. And which ones I want to include. I'm not necessarily going to include all of them.
I'm making them a little bit bigger than I actually see these shadow shapes, only because when I come in with the light, it's very easy to totally obscure those shadow shapes and then have to restate them. So if I err a little bit on the side of making them a little darker, a little uh, larger shapes, uh, I've got plenty of room to cut into that when I come in with my lights. And I tried to connect them here. Uh, they may not be exactly that way in life, and some of that I may lose, but again, I'm just trying to think about a flow of eye movement here. I think that's about it as far as the shadows on these lilacs. I'm gonna switch brushes and go to the shadows on my white flowers now. So all I'm doing is I got the initial shape and size in, put in something, a placeholder for the background, starting to come in on my shadows on some of these smaller shapes. I'm going to change brushes because to get some of that red out and, and have a, a pure uh, brush for the white, I, is going to take a lot of time in cleaning, so it's just easier to use another brush. I did mix up a warm white for the shadow on the white flowers, a Viridian Transparent Oxide Red, and a little bit of white um, to just get in some of this uh, darker shadow shape. Let's see if you can see that here. There's a darker shadow shape under here. So I don't want to just have it be a, a pure dull gray. I want it to be a colorful gray, um, but it's got to stay a little bit on the warmer side. Um, and again, I'm looking for where's the shadow shapes, where is the pattern of that shadow. And at this point, everything is, you know, pretty general. I can, I can always come back and alter things. That's never a problem. Um, some days I'll even scrape off an entire painting if uh, at the end of the day um, it doesn't seem like it's working. So um, I treat everything as kind of a grand experiment uh, and um, knowing that it's only canvas and paint and I can change it and if it's not working there's something that I could learn from that for the next time. Uh, so I'm looking for shapes. And the shapes, uh, try not to have them be too repetitive. The, our bias is once we put down a mark, we tend to put down another mark just like it. So we have to override that. I always have to say in my head, change, change, change. Are these things different? Different direction, different size, different shape, different color. Have to change something. So. As I'm going along, um, if I see things are getting too similar, I may just change it, even though that might not be in the reference, but I'm changing it again. Everything is done in, in terms of improving the design and the excitement of the painting. And there's a big connection here that I want to get in. So I have the undersides of those paint, those. Um, Flowers. I am going to add a white flower up top, which doesn't exist in my reference, but I think would add something in terms of movement um, and eye movement. It's not going to ever be as bright as these white flowers down here, but it's something to, again, to lead your eye from white to white to white in a triangle, move your eye around the painting for points of light. Um, and down here, where there was the dark, I'm gonna change that to a white. There's no reason why I can't change it. It would just be a better, I think, design element to put that in there. So I'm gonna have that be there. Okay, I think we've got in most of our light and shadow. I am gonna come back and address this area over here. Um, there's, a, there's a lot more of these uh, 
lilacs hidden behind here. So I don't have to report them right now. I'm just, again, putting a little of this color back there so that in case I choose to call any of them out later, I have that base there. I may cover some of it over with leaves, um, but at least get something down on the canvas to be uh, a placeholder for this. So I've got my shadows in here. Um, maybe next I'll address the tabletop here. Um, in the photo, it's very dark. I don't know if I'm going to make it that dark, but I'm thinking it might be nice to have a little warmth down here. There's going to be a lot of cool on the cool flowers and the cool light on the flowers. So I have a kind of a brownish mixture, uh, brownish gray. Uh, that was uh, maybe Terra Rosa, uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm just going to put it on loosely. Um, again, if some of this under painting shows through, that's, that's okay. Gives a little variety. I'm just covering up real estate at this point. and making sure that I'm liking the way the design is going, which is the most important. Okay. Um, next, I think I'm gonna move to the, I'm gonna move to the vase. Um, this vase is a little bit different than a lot of my still life vases where I have a single light source and there's a kind of dramatic lighting from one side, rolling to the left, I mean, from the left to the right. In this one, this, the light's coming from above and it's not really a super sunny day. So there's really not a lot of form on this jar. Uh, you don't have the you know, light rolling into shadow like you do in, in a lot of um, uh, scenes with a single light source since it's overhead lighting. So most of this is shadowed. It's, uh, I believe it was a white vase, but you can see how uh, uh, darker it looks than the white on these flowers so it's really more like the shadow color of the flowers and I think that will be helpful if I think in my head that this is white and I go to paint it white it, all of a sudden it's going to connect with the white of the light here and compete with this white shape so it's it plays its role it's a supporting cast for this painting it's not the star and I'm going to come in with um, a, just a, a gray to um, save that shape. Again, I can adjust it later, but this is an approximation of where I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna leave some shape here, space here for this white lilac. And um, I did cover up some of the area that I wanted for that white flower, so I don't want to, um, you know, overlook that space. So I'm taking just an ordinary Q-tip. You could take paper towel or whatever, have some Gamsol on it, and I'm going to um, lift out where I want that white shape to be. This shape is a pretty important shape in my overall painting, so I've got to make sure I've got it the way that I want it. And if it's not clean enough, I can use some um, paper towel. Now here, the shadow of the um, lilacs, 
the white lilacs almost is the same as the shadow uh, as the color of this vase and that's okay I can either let those be like lost edges later or there might be pieces of leaves coming out there or shadows from those lilacs a little bit on there um, so uh, I'm not worried about that right now I might add a little bit of white to this uh, grayish color that I'm having and there you know there is a little bit of this central area getting a little bit more light so I may just subtly put that in there and there is a subtle highlight again it's not a dramatic blaring highlight like you sometimes see it's just a subtle piece of light and I am going to put that in here we may need to restate it later sometimes the uh, highlight seems to melt in there but at least we kind of know where we're going okay so the last thing I really need to do to get the whole thing blocked in is to bring in the um, the lights so and this is kind of the fun part because we're getting back into this richer color so let's go back to the darker flowers and now is when I'm going to come in with the main body the local color of the lilacs that's not in the shadows and then on top of that I'm going to add even lighter color um, to hopefully start to give it that form as I'm doing that and laying down edges um, I'm going to try to make some of the edges on the outside feel like the you know ins and outs ins and outs of uh, a lilac. So uh, I'll be having my mind on a few things at once. Is it the right value? Is it the shape that I want? Um, is it the color I want? And what kind of edge am I leaving? Um, so I'm going to go to the uh, cobalt violet um, and just look at where I'm rolling into shadow um, and where I'm starting to move into light on these basic different uh, lilacs here. This one here is not that much in light, but there is one over here that starts to get into more light. If I pick up a little dirt from the shadow there, I'm cleaning off my brush and coming back in. I don't make too many strokes um, with one brush, I uh, try to keep picking up some clean paint. Okay, let's get even lighter here. So have some more white come on here. I'm putting down a couple of different colors of the lilac, more of the straight a cobalt violet with a little white in it, and then also some cobalt violet plus a touch of blue so that I just have a variation, and that also has white in it. So those they both have white so that I'm lifting up the value, but one's a little warmer and one's a little cooler just to have a little variety. Let's see if I can bring that closer so you can start to see there that there's some um, alternation going on. All right, this one seems to be quite a bit lighter. Now I've got to think though, it's lighter on here. How much lighter do I really want it from my path of light? Maybe I don't want it that light, so I'm rethinking that. So every decision is, you know, does it work for my design? 
and you know what's there is just a suggestion you know it's not a have to it's just a possibility and then I get to decide does it work or not and some of it I might not be able to tell until I get more of this in and then I can um, make adjustments where they need to be but at this stage it's really hard to know does something need to be adjusted because um, there's so much uh, still empty space that I'm um, having to relate it to. And down here, as we start coming out here, um, I'm going right over a little bit of that green. It's okay, this area doesn't have to be as super bright and chromatic as these other areas. It's just a repeat of color. So again, I'm kind of like feeling my way through here to see where, where do I want a path of light going. These I'm not going to worry about for now. I may have lost, like I told you, it's very easy to lose your shadow. So I lost this nice, interesting shadow shape here. Can I restate that? One of my teachers, um, Robert Johnson, talked about ha gliding your brush uh, over the canvas like you were hydroplaning, and I'll never forget that because you get that sensation rather than keep pushing the paint on or scrubbing it in just to have it glide off to the paint underneath. And um, that's a kind of a nice image to keep in mind as you're thinking about you know, delicately creating these shapes. Okay, so I'm just getting the lights and shadows. I got plenty of time to come back later and refine those, but it's getting me in the direction that I want to go. Uh, I'm going to move over to the, um, the white flowers, the light of the white flowers now, so we get a, a picture of what that's going to look like. And I mixed up some white with a tiny bit of blue a cobalt blue um, to just have it be a really cool light to contrast the warm shadows. And um, here I really want to be mindful of these shapes, extra mindful. This is my star here. So how do I make this area interesting? I'm usually starting at the edge of the flower and pulling in like I'm making the hardest edge there and then I pull in um, and then I can adjust uh, the relationships in here, blend them if I need to. But I want to get, I start here with the clean and pull in. And then you'll also see that I move my um, wrist around a lot. You know, I'll be going this direction. I'll be going this direction. I'll, you know, look at the shape I want to make and what angle do I want it to be at and just keep moving uh, my wrist in that direction. This comes up pretty high. And if I was doing this with 
you know, in my studio with all the time in the world. I might go a little bit slower, but I'm just trying to get in for you the idea of how you would start to uh, create flowers like this. Here, remember I talked in the beginning about flowers and clumps. These, these three flowers, um, they're, they're separate, but they're on top of each other. So I want to bridge and the, have some of these connections of these lights. There actually might be more than three, but these clumps, even though they're separate flowers, I'm interested in just getting this shape of light. So there'll be places where I overlap some of the lights and overlap some of the shadows, um, regardless of what flower they belong to. So at this point, they're still, you know, pretty much flat planes because I have the lights and the shadow. I don't really have a lot of transition between those two yet, but, um, you know, we'll get there. But you've got to start with this first, and then you can, you know, continue to refine as much as you like. You know, some people don't do much refinement and care, Larry doesn't care to keep it abstract. Um, you know, some refine it a lot and do something more photorealistic. And um, I kind of do something in between. I want to suggest the flowers. I want enough form to have you read what they are, but I don't want so much detail that, um, you know, you don't leave something for the viewer to, to fill in for themselves. Um, I do see some warm, some real warms in the underside of these shadows. So I am going to uh, bring a little bit of this orange in here. I've got like just um, uh, a grayed down orange. And um, if you think about purple and green and orange, that is a secondary triad. They kind of look nice together. It just brings a little warmth. I mean, I do see it in reality in there somehow, and it does tie down to uh, the orange that I've got on the, on the uh, ground plane here. So if I have a chance to repeat a color that makes sense, um, I may take that. And it also can help me transition a little bit between the light and the shadow. Okay, there we go there. Uh, now over here, there's shadow that connects me to this other flower. And there's a little bit of light, but it's not really in bright light. So there's a little bit of bridge there. Again, rather than have these three individual flowers, I'm trying to have a way to sort of bridge some of them together to make it one bigger shape instead of three separate shapes. And so I've got that going on. 
I said up here I was going to have another one of these white flowers. I may even put one back here. And I'm always cleaning my brush every time I, you know, before I reload it, cleaning the brush just with the paper towel. I don't dip in Gamsol um, uh, a lot while I'm painting. I only use it uh, really to tone my canvas or at the end when I'm cleaning. Um, I found from my days in watercolor where I was used to swishing the brush constantly in water, I had the habit of swishing in Gamsol, and the Gamsol is a paint thinner, so it will actually cut down, you know, the, your paint, and, you know, you don't want it, your brushes to be soaked with Gamsol. Um, so I um, put a lid on my Gamsol so that I don't have that habit of keep popping in there mindlessly. I'm going to go back and put a couple of pieces of light on this tabletop here. Some little maybe little petals that fell or something like that. Maybe put another one over here. Okay, uh, the last piece, what's going on over here is, um, well, that's the, um, the one that's a little bit darker. Um, this is um, the cobalt violet from uh, my Mary Puro. I also have the Cobalt Violet from Rembrandt and you know some different brands. The Cobalt Violet seems to be different from different brands. So um, you might, if you like to paint flowers, you might just buy a few of them and use them. They all have their own different cast to them. So they give you some variety within that same color family. Now I'm looking here, there are some really dark accent points, so I can start to bring a few of those in just to help establish these shadow patterns a little bit more and get me a little bit closer to my attention on my um, main event here, these flowers. So just coming in with a little bit of that darker uh, lilac color to reinforce that. I'm thinking about getting your eye and moving you down here. I'm mixing a little bit of uh, some of the lilac color, the light lilac into the whites back here to make them not so pure white. Again, I want them to be light, but I don't want them to be overtaking things. Uh, I'm gonna roll back here a minute and, and take a look at this. It's Right now, these are still looking too linear, so I want to break that up. So now's a good time to, to do that. Um, before I get too much further. So I'm going to come in here and with this dark paint, I'm also establishing, you know, more depth in that place where there, no light can get to, so it's really super dark in there. But it also helps me to get um, the edges of some of these flowers to pop a little bit more. So I'm always you know, looking at not only the shape I'm putting down and the purpose of that, but what else is it accomplishing for me as far as design. So 
Just softening some of the edges between the light and where it's turning for the shadow. Let's bring a little bit of this back here. I hadn't really decided too much what I was going to do with that, but let's get something in there. While we're on shadows, we can put a little bit, whoops, too much, uh, something for cast shadows on this tabletop here, where some of these petals are. And under the vase, just kind of a neutral, neutral dark. And we'll have an opportunity to clean that up later with the tabletop. All right, what's missing are the, um, the leaves and then just adding some refinement to these flowers. So let's think about where we want these leaves to be. Um, there are a whole bunch of leaves here, which um, I think would be nice. It sort of offsets this in terms of weight and brings you back down around here. Um, and I don't need a lot of information here. It can be pretty simple. I've got a lot of excitement and energy here this can be a little bit calmer area. So I'm going to go, uh, I'll take a big brush for this, and um, I'll take a big new brush that doesn't have any white on it yet, and bring in some green. Um, And again, these are kind of um, a big mass. I can use some of them to you know, carve out some of the petals here. But it's a grouping of shapes. So I'm just gonna get in a mass of these leaves and then I can adjust the, the colors I do like this kind of bringing you in. So I'll keep that. And then I'm just looking what else could add some interest. This is kind of nice to have this here again because it creates a foil for the white edges here. And here as well. And then there's some kind of fun ones that cross in front, create some movement. You know, again, do I want it? Does it help? Does it um, add anything in terms of design or story? Um, here, the story is pretty straightforward, but does it add anything in terms of design? Maybe I'll add a, a few down here. And maybe as we go up, some of these up here are a little bit cooler. There's one here, see if I can get something in there, that's a little bit cooler. To just be cooler, I use the a blue and a lemon yellow and a little bit of white. Um, so just to make it cooler than the background. Again, I said there was this cool light on these, um, so you have an opportunity to vary your green temperatures and i'm 
I'm just mixing some of the cool and the warm greens together uh, as we go along here, just for variety. And then in, 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 in life, some of them are uh, cooler or warmer, depending on if they're in shadow, if they're facing the, the skylight. Um, and then I think about what would help my composition And I can adjust the shape. This one up here is getting a little big. I want. I like the fact that it had that uh, underneath part that was in shadow. So I can just bring in a darker green to carve out that shape. Same thing here. I can bring in a darker green behind this and make these shapes smaller. So it's just a continual, you know, looking at this, looking at my initial idea of what I wanted to communicate. Am I getting the light moving through? Um, I can come in and add a little bit more paint back here now that I have a little bit better idea of where I'm going. Um, I can add in a little richer paint quality there. In the beginning, I was staying thin, so I... Uh, you know, could handle the paint without smearing it too much. Now I'm, now I'm to the point where I've got these lights on. The paint is pretty thick, um, but I want some more of that rich paint down here. And it's kind of a mid-tone green leading me down to these darker greens down here. And as I come in behind, I can carve out the shape of that vase. And I might restate some of these darks down here. And I just move my brush around. I don't want it to be a thing, anything specifically. I'm just making it dark, lighter coming down into the dark. Uh, let's quickly get into this tabletop, maybe bring a little bit more uh, light on top of that. I have the orangey brown underneath, so it's going to stay a little bit warmer than some other parts of the painting. Uh, but if I bring a little white over that to cool it from that cool overhead light, that'll maybe bring some things together here. Okay, and now um, I think I'm just going to go back to some of these central lilacs and add a little bit of detail and adjust some things and then uh, maybe call it a day for now. So on this lilac, I'm wanting to add a little bit more shadow. And now I can start making these shapes a little smaller. You know, there are some bits of shadow that creep in to where the light is and a little bit of light that creeps into the shadow. So I'm trying to integrate a little bit more here. So, you know, look where I see that. Is that, does that work? Does that make sense? And if so, include it. If not, leave it out. I think I do want these to have a little bit of a, uh, a, sh a little shadow casting even though it's not a lot there is a little bit there and I think it would help them stand out a little bit more
And I'm coming just on top with some more white just to restate the overall shape of light. And maybe add some small bits, smaller shapes to have you have that feeling of layers of petals on top of each other. And then where can I continue to make it a more interesting shape? Now that I've got some of these leaves, I can just paint right over them real easily, real softly, gently. And the same thing, bring in a little of the shadow bits. You know, where are there little bits of shadows that pop through here? That maybe leaves some little, little shapes and some idea that things are on top of each other. And maybe in here goes a little deeper, a little, a little darker and a little, maybe a little more depth in there as these two cross. Um, there's still a lot more that I can do on this to adjust, refine, and all that, but I think this gives you a, a general sense of how to get started and how to get that feeling of, you know, uh, joyful flowers uh, uh, in a pot in the garden. I've added a couple of, and maybe little details with a palette knife to make some of these edges a little bit harder here and there. Uh, or give the illusion of maybe some stems, but only if it's going to help the cause. Add a few real dark accents to a couple of these leaves. Uh, oh, I didn't add a leaf down here. I can add some leaves in here as well. Why? Because they're there? No, because it's another opportunity for me to get contrast there. And a little bit of movement and direction. So if it works, you use it. If not, ignore it. And I'm clotting into some of these leaves with the background color. And I think we may call it a day. So um, there, it's not quite finished. I probably spent a little bit more time stepping back, adjusting things. But um, I think this gives you a, 
a sense of how to get started, how to, th most importantly, how to think about um, how you want to turn an idea into a design on your, on your canvas. So thanks so much for watching today. I appreciate it. And uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if I can be of any help, um, please get in touch. Thank you.